Over the last 30 years, Social Security has become an important factor in the life of every American. Even though many Americans, especially the younger ones, may not be aware of it. You are aware of it, of course. That's why you are here today. But many of your fellow Americans do not appreciate the full range of the system. Lots of people, for example, think of Social Security in terms of old age retirement. It's true that retirement pensions are the biggest single part of the structure. But Social Security also provides for workers who are disabled. It provides for the widows and children of workers who die. Since last year, it has also provided Medicare. In short, Social Security is for everyone, regardless of age. It's the best insurance you can buy. It is the insurance for all of America. There is one basic shortcoming in all these different aspects of Social Security. The benefits are too low. The insurance really doesn't insure as well as it should. This is the opinion of President Lyndon Johnson, an opinion we in the AFL CIO share. I asked him to talk to you about Social Security, and he agreed to join me in this film's message. I am proud to present to you the President of the United States. Mr. Meany and my good friends of the American labor movement, every American wage earner, every friend of social progress, can count four years in our recent history as landmarks for human dignity. 1935, when Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the original Social Security Act. 1950, when the leadership of Harry Truman brought forth major increases in Social Security benefits. 1961, when under President Kennedy, the Social Security system was significantly broadened. 1965, when the Congress enacted both Medicare and an increase in Social Security benefits. The time has now come to build upon these solid foundations and to extend them. President Roosevelt was right when he called the original Social Security law a cornerstone in a structure which is by no means complete, unquote. Our effort to guarantee dignity and a decent income to every worker still has a long, long way to go. Today, in spite of our great wealth, too many citizens have been left behind by the progress that they helped to build. More than five million older citizens live in poverty today, and more than two million must depend on welfare for a living. Nearly 40% of our older citizens have total assets of less than $1,000. Like you, I believe that these conditions are intolerable, and I know they're unnecessary. So I have recommended to Congress Social Security legislation, which will bring the greatest improvements in living standards for the elderly since the act was passed in 1935. I have recommended a 20% overall increase in Social Security payments, a 59% increase for the 2.5 million citizens now receiving minimum, minimum benefits, a 15% increase at least for the remaining uh, 20 and a half million beneficiaries, a monthly payment of at least $150 for couples and $100 for individuals with 25 years of coverage, a series of amendments to broaden and to improve the protection of Social Security. Now, what will these uh, changes mean for us? They will mean that uh, 1,400,000 citizens will be lifted out of poverty in the year 1968 alone. They will mean that 500,000 farm workers and many, many thousands of civil servants who now have no coverage or at least limited coverage will receive much better protection. They will mean that additional Social Security payments next year will total $4,100,000,000. And that is nearly five times greater than the major increase in 1950, and almost six times greater than the increase of 1961. So 
this uh, promises a great deal to the elderly. But it will, I think, help all of our people, every worker and his family, every widow and child who depends on this protection. So my recommendations, if enacted into law, will extend Social Security to 70,000 severely disabled widows that are under 62 years of age. They will enable beneficiaries to earn more money without losing benefits. They will extend Medicare not only to the age, but to 1,500,000 disabled citizens under 65. They will end a shameful condition on social insecurity for millions who have earned their nation's concern. Since the Depression days, our nation's wealth has multiplied ten times. Yet there are still those who say we cannot afford the progress that these steps would bring. There are still those who say that our great social battles have all been won, that this is now a time for us to rest upon our laurels. And to them, I want to say this. As long as any American is left behind by progress, as long as liberty and dignity are denied to any man, we have battles to fight, and we have victories to win. And I am counting on you to help us fight these battles and help us win these victories. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'm sure this audience agrees with everything you say. Your program, Mr. President, is certain to bring new hope to millions of elderly Americans and to millions of today's workers who face the hazards of illness, accidents, and old age. So we welcome the President's proposals and we warmly support them. We consider them a substantial down payment on the kind of social security system we seek. What the President proposes can be and should be achieved this year. Let me make this additional point. The package we and the President want will not be won at meetings like this. It will not be won by passing resolutions. It will not be won by goodwill and good intentions. It will only be won by action, positive action by every one of us. The first of these positive actions is to sign the petition that you will receive at this meeting. But that's only the beginning. I urge all of you to follow up. Write to your congressmen and your senators. Visit them when they are in their home offices. Talk to your friends and neighbors, to your church and school groups, to your fellow club members. Get them to read the literature we have prepared and to write their congressmen and senators. Get everyone you can to sign your petition. That's the way you can best support stronger Social Security. That is how progress is made. That is how laws are passed. It is really up to us. If we all do our part, I am confident that stronger Social Security will become a reality this year.